part of your assignment, um, which I haven't told you how to do yet. Automation allows us to record changes to mixed parameters in real time. Uh, in real time, which they can then automatically perform during each time we play back our uh, program session. So, on an analog console, or in the old days, um, a mix engineer had to remember all the changes they would made during a mix and re-perform them every single time they wanted to hear those, or if they were recording a mix to tape. For example, if they're like, okay, I want to turn the drums up during the chorus of the song, they'd have to remember every single time they played back a tune to turn up the drums by 3 dB or whatever. Uh, this made for a very laborious, limited, highly variable, error-prone fix. Uh, so, the so auto automation became like a necessity in mixing, and you know, the latest and greatest engineers back in the day came up with the idea of being able to automate or re-perform mix techniques uh, time and time again, so they would be uh, identical each time. With digital consoles and the advent of the idea of internal processing power. Uh, you were able to store things like EQ settings, fade removes, all that. So that's kind of sort of just a very, very brief history. Um, but in Pro Tools, or almost any other digital audio workstation, so Logic, Cubase, uh, Sequoia, Pyramix, any of those guys, uh, almost every mix parameter can be stored and automated during playback. So that is included, but not limited to, volume, panning, mutes, or Pretty much anything. EQ, compression, pardon me? Tempo, uh, anything. Literally anything can be automated so it plays back <coughs> with your session. So, how do we actually get there and what does it look like? So, if I go back to my session, I'm going to get rid of this track. Okay, so I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Remember how we get to our playlist? Track view selector. Place is right here. Underneath waveform, we have four different automation views that we can see. Mute, a volume mute, pan left, and pan right. If it was a mono track, it would just be a single pan, but for now we're going to talk about volume. Click on that. Click on that, and a volume adjustment uh, line pops up, right? Basically smack in the middle of our left channel of our stereo file. Everyone see that? Good. So, if I move my fader, you can see that the volume line will adjust accordingly, right? Right? It's just a reflection of where my fader is in the mix window. If I use my pencil tool uh, or my grabber tool, I can then manipulate points in that waveform where my fader will fall. So I'm clicking and dragging my pencil tool, and look at that. So, if I press my playback <coughs> now, but, uh, look at the fader. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Helps us out a lot. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Yep, it's here. So now that I have, so now that I have written that automation and I press play, but I'm like, oh, I actually want to change that parameter. Okay, I'll just turn it down. Uh-oh. It's not going to let you. And now 
no logs to that automation that's been written. No longer have that manual move. So if you're stuck in Pro Tools and you're trying to change something, even if, so like if I delete all this stuff, and even if I have one node just right there, it's still gonna be stuck to reading automation, okay? The whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. So you have to make sure that if you want to go back to manual control, you have no nodes. No nodes. No or else you're going to be stuck. Okay, so that's a bit of a roadblock. That's something you got to be careful of, okay? So that's how we want, that's how we can add in automation manually. Okay, if we want to draw it in or if we want to use our grabber tool to punch in little nodes. If you want to delete automation, it's the same idea. Using your grabber tool, you can add in nodes like that. Manipulate them, and if you want to delete them, you can either option click with your grabber tool, and I'll delete a node, or just simply highlight over it and hit delete. Okay, that won't delete any of your audio. It'll just delete the automation lanes if you're in the volume, uh, the volume graph. So you can do that for volume. You can do it for panning. So let's see here's my pan left. Check this out. If I do this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. What a mess. Very good. 
click on the fader. You see how it starts to and I think it's gonna burn. Then I'm gonna need a bit of water soon. Okay, so I've written that automation as it plays back. Now you can see that it's been written, and when I let go of the fader, it returns to the position it's already been at, right? So if I hit playback here now, it will now read the automation that I've written I think it's gonna burn. until gonna I click on it again, water soon. and it'll start writing automation again. Okay. Right, there you go. I've written that automation. Yeah. <laughs> pretty great. Brutal. Pretty great, pretty great. And guess what? Pro Tools will follow that until I ground the fader again. <laughs> so now you can see it's now writing automation. Again. So it's overriding the old. Always, it will always overwrite the old automation. Okay? Until you let go, and then it will go back to the position that it's already at. So if I hold it here, let go, it'll go back to where it is. See that? It'll go whoop, and we'll bring it back to where the next place is, and it'll continue to take it. So that's auto touch. Uh, yeah, you can undo it. Auto latch is the same as touch, where it will read automation. But I feel that that right? No. Reading what I've written, reading, reading, reading. Then I'm when I touch it, it will do the same as touch, it will start writing. However, when I let go, it will continue to write automation. Okay. It will latch on to the volume and keep going until I stop playback. Touch will only go when I'm touching the fader, touching the fader on with the next <coughs> and latch will latch on to that until I stop playback. Okay? You guys see the difference between those two? Yeah. Okay. The last one is right mode, and be very careful with right mode. I never suggest using it ever. I never do. I don't know why, but right mode will start writing automation. The moment that you press play in your in your workstation. But I feel so that the light up the room. As soon as you and I think it's gone. Good, good, good. Ready? Press stop. It will then automatically switch to auto latch. Yeah, it's it's good that it doesn't, but right mode is very dangerous because you never want to necessarily write exactly from that position. I mean, I guess if you like have, you got your fader in a position that you like know is perfect, and you go to write because you just want the whole track to that, I guess, but that's pretty dangerous. Anyway, so those are the five different options. If I go to read, I run into trouble because I'm already locked in, but I can't write any new automation here, right? I'm stuck. If I go to off, that will turn the automation off. And that way I can go back to my moving the fader. You can see a little blue line there that is a representation of where the fader's at. And then these three down here is when I can write my new automation. Yes, sir? What different instances would you use touch and latch for? That's a good question. So it depends on the context of what you're mixing. If I was doing music stuff, um, I don't use latch very often uh, because I want to be able to just do very, I get to like dial in my mix more or less with my faders. And then I'll use touch to just like enhance certain parts, and it'll bring it back to it down. So say I wanted to boost the drums, the drum fill before chorus. I just like boost that, and then bring it back down, and let it go, and it'll go back to the resting position. If I'm mixing uh, a show, like in post audio, usually what I'll do is I'll do a pass with latch first. So my very first pass of the show will be a pass with latch automation, where I know that I get kind of things in the ballpark, I hit go, everything's writing, and I can manipulate as I go get into the ballpark, take note of where I've missed a spot, go back, switch it to touch, so I know that I'm close, and then touch from there, and then you can dial it and dial it in until you're very close. Yeah? How do the old school uh, automation go when you have the board? Like, how would they run it? Well, old school automation, 